Hi guys, this is our AccuPlacer review conversation. We are doing problems from the arithmetic section, which is the first of the three sections in the AccuPlacer test. Um, when we're talking in person sometime, I'll tell you a little bit more about how the AccuPlacer test is um, organized. But there are three sections of increasing difficulty. Arithmetic is the lowest level of difficulty. So that's where we started. And these are the four questions, the four problems that you sent to me. You sent me the screenshots. They were the ones where you got wrong answers. So I'm going to go through these four problems and show you how to solve them. Now, before I do that, I need to caveat and say that one of the things that some people do when they take tests is they don't work the problems in a straightforward way. They make a series of educated guesses to help them eliminate uh, nonsensical answers and get to their answer quicker and more efficiently. That's fine. That's absolutely fine. That's really hard to teach because it's, it's a very intuitive process. So I'm not going to try and give you those kinds of little tips and tricks. Um, another reason why I'm not going to try and do that, number one, it's intuitive, so it's really hard to, to teach that. And number two, the AccuPlacer is not a time test. So there's no time rush here. So there's no reason for you to worry about trying to rush through it, which is good because this first problem, to do it in the most straightforward way, it takes some time. So, some time. I'm numbering it number one, but that's just for our purposes. There's no number uh, on the test. Which of the following fractions is greater than two fifths and less than three fifths? So I'm just gonna write down the important parts of that. Greater than two fifths and less than three fifths. Now, the first thing that you need to recognize in this problem is that in order to compare fractions, the denominators have to match. Let me write that down. And what I suggest you do is as you're watching this video, grab a piece of paper and pencil and copy whatever I write down, you write it down too. Number one, that'll keep you from being as bored as you might be otherwise, because you know, honestly, a bird's gonna fly past your window and that's gonna be more interesting than what I'm telling you. Um, and also, information just goes in our brains better when we're moving our bodies. So just by picking up your pencil and scribbling along with me, um, you'll help yourself understand better what you're doing. To compare fractions, and I'm not going to say denominators, but we know that's the real word. I'm just going to say the bottoms. Must match. So what we have to do when we look at the four different options for answers, they are all different denominators. Ugh, I'm gonna write them down. Um, I'm gonna use the, a little box to show like the little click it option. One fourth, three sevenths, three eighths, and Five eights. As I said, there are lots of fun little tricks, intuitive ways you can whittle down the options on this, but I'm not going to do it that way. I'm going to do the straight math way. In order to compare these fractions, we have to find the least common multiple and then rebuild each one of these to make it have that denominator that we're going to compare them all to. So in order to build a least common denominator or least common multiple, which reminds me we have to multiply. It's two ways of saying the same thing. We have to take all of the denominators and make sure that they are reflected in this big number that we're going to make them all match to. So I know I need the, the five to be in there. I'm going to skip over the four. I'm going to come back to that. We're going to need to make sure that seven is a factor of the least common multiple and eight also has to be a factor. Okay. If I multiply these numbers through, I will get a big number, but all of these numbers will multiply into it cleanly. And that's what I need. 
four, I did not put in my list, and you know why? Because four is a, a factor of eight. So if my number includes eight, then it will for sure include four. So I don't have to list four as a separate factor. Let's multiply these out. Five times eight is 40. I'm trying to do as much of this in my head as possible. 280 is our multiple. Ay, yeah, yeah, are you kidding me right now? That means we have to multiply each of these fractions by the parts of this string of numbers that they don't already have because we have to make sure that it turns into 280. So I'm gonna multiply this one by some number that's equal to one, top and bottom are the same, and when I'm done, it's gonna have to equal 280 on the bottom. I don't know what it's gonna be on the top, but I have to do that for all of these numbers. Don't worry, it's not gonna be, once we get rolling, it will happen more quickly than it looks like. So I'm writing this out the long way, times equals 280, times something equals 280. Remember, in these boxes, we're gonna put the number that helps us multiply that up to 280, and then we'll have to multiply the top by whatever that number is. And then this one will be my tricky one, right? Because uh, it's part of the eight. We don't have to, mm, that's just too confusing, Never mind. All right, let's go to the five first. Five is the denominator. We have to figure out what do you multiply times five to get 280. Now, that's a bit of a puzzle, but if I look down here, I can see, oh look, I multiplied these three numbers together to get 280. So if I've already got the five, that just means I need seven times eight. So I know this is gonna have to be 56 times 56. Ay, 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 right? That's kind of a big number, but it's okay. Once we multiply five times 56, we know that's gonna be 280, and because we proved it right here, and then two times 56, well, let's see, two times 50 would be 100, two times six would be 12, so this is going to be 112. All right, so I'm adjusting the fractions so that they all have the same denominator. This is five, so it's also gonna have to be 56 times 56. I know that gives me the 280, so I have it right down here. Now I have to do three times 56, and I'm not gonna try and do that in my head. I'm gonna do that right down here. I'm gonna say 56 times three, 15, it's 168. So this is, the low end and the high end of the range, we're trying to find a number that fits inside the range, right? It's greater than this, it's less than that. So in between uh, 112 and 168, once we get the denominators to match. Now I have to go through and fix all of these so that they equal 280 on the bottom and then I'll be able to compare the top. Because in order to compare fractions, the denominators have to match. All right, let's go to this one first. I'm gonna go through these backwards. All right, I've already got an eight. So looking at my list of factors, I know I'm gonna need the five and the seven this time, right? I've already got the eight, so that's 35. I know that eight times 35 will equal 280 because there's the 35 and there's the eight. Okay, now I have to do for the top 35 times five 15, 16, 17. So this one is 175. That is not gonna work, is it? Because it's too big. It's, all, it's outside of the top of the range. So this is a no. I'm gonna put a, an X through it to say, we don't want that one, all right? Um, the answer I like, I'll circle wherever we come to it. Okay, this one is also an eight denominator. We have to pump it up to 280. We know that that means if we have the eight, then we need five times seven. So that's 35. This is also 35. Let's multiply 35 times three to get that new numerator. Five carry the one, 105. Is that within the desired range? No, it is not. 105 is lower than the bottom of our range. So this is a no-go also. 
Okay, let's try this one. This one's a little bit trickier to adjust. Four times something has to equal, I didn't write it in here, 280. Now, the good news is we can easily do this one in our heads. It's gotta be 70, right? Four times 70 is 280, yay. Okay, is this in our range? Absolutely not, it's way too low, isn't it? All right, that gets us down to this last one. Do you think it's a coincidence that I saved this one till last? I don't. That is just like me to not want to ruin the fun. Okay, seven times what equals 280? This is another one that's pretty easy. We know it's got to be 40. Again, we've got the seven, so that means we need the five and the eight. Five times eight is 40. Using our prime factors helps us play with these multiplications and make them much easier. The bottom's 40, top is 40, and that is 120. And look, da 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 da, it's in between 112 and 168. Yay, this is the correct answer. I'll put a little puffy cloud of knowledge around it. You chose this one. I'm not sure what your thinking was. I'm not sure how you came to that. This is the one that you chose, but this is the correct answer. And this problem is all about making sure that all these fractions have matching denominators so you can compare them. Okay, that was the longest and the hardest of these problems. So if you're exhausted already, don't worry. They're not gonna take that much longer. Which of the following is equivalent to one fourth divided by three-fourths. So all we're doing here is dividing fractions, and we just have to remember how to do that. Remember the secret to dividing fractions is that we leave the first fraction the same. We take the divided sign and we turn it into a multiplying sign, and we take the fraction following the division sign and we flip it. I didn't give myself enough room. Four-thirds. Change this into multiplication, change this upside down. I could give you a long rationale as to why we can do that. It has to do with complex fractions and multiplying by reciprocals. I'm gonna save you the drama of that and just say, remember, when you're dividing fractions, you're actually multiplying by the reciprocal. Now we can simply multiply. Remember when we multiply, we go straight across the top, straight across the bottom, but we are allowed to cancel top and bottom, any way that we like. The answers here were, are one over 12, three over 16, three over eight, Oh, I'm sorry, I'm copying from the old problem. The third option is one over three, and the fourth option is three. The right answer here is number three. You chose this one. And I think that what you did was you just multiplied across the top and the bottom. Maybe you misinterpreted that as multiplication, but remember that's a division sign, so we change it to multiplication, flip it, cancel, multiply, yay, that's the right answer. Three. This one doesn't even have any words by it. It's just a multiplication problem. Seven and one third times two and two elevenths. Okay, the trick here is we don't multiply mixed numbers. What we have to do is change these to improper fractions. If you took a full-blown class with me, you would undoubtedly hear me rant multiple times about how much I hate mixed numbers. They're fine when you're in middle school. They're fine for pre-algebra mathematics. But once we get into algebra, no, they're silly and foolish. We don't want them. We always get rid of them as soon as possible. Remember that the mantra for adjusting is it's the bottom times the big 
plus the top. So we take the bottom number three, we multiply it by the big number, get 21, and then one more is 22. Denominator stays the same. And then we're gonna multiply it. Likewise, I don't like x's for multiplication. That's way too seventh grade for me. Bottom times the big plus the top, 22 plus two is 24 over 11. All right, that looks good. Now we're ready to multiply. Remember that we can cancel. Here we chose to cancel before we multiply. Right, remember with canceling, when we're multiplying, we can do any top against any bottom. 22 and 11, 11 goes into both of those. It goes into this twice, it goes into this once. Three and 24, three times eight is 24, so this is once and this is eight times. Hallelujah, we multiply it through, straight across the top, straight across the bottom, we get 16 over one. When there's a one on the bottom, we can just drop it, it's 16. All right, let's look at our options. The first one is 14. The second one is 14 and two thirds. The third one is 14 and 17 30 thirds. And the last one is 16. The correct answer is 16. You chose this one. I'm not sure exactly how you got to that, but I can see all of these answers lead with a 14, which is people thinking, oh, seven times two. The tricky thing about multiple choice tests, man, is that the people who write them are evil. I mean, that's a blank, that's a sweeping statement, but I'm not gonna shy away from it. They try to trick you. They try to come up with answers that a person who doesn't know their stuff might think made sense. But 16 is the right answer. Um, yes, beautiful. Okay, last one. 14, um, no, I'm calling it problem number four. If 42% of a number N If a number n is 8.4, what is the value of n? Okay. I wish I know, I wish I knew how Nancy taught you these because John Saxon has a super specific way that's very, very helpful and useful. Um, but I don't think Nancy probably taught you this way, and so I'm not gonna use John's way because that'll just confuse you. Here is a big collection of something. And you know what I'm gonna say? It's swords, it's plastic swords lying on a doorstep. You don't know how long I've obsessed about you and your brother's swords. I just think they're the coolest thing. Um, and I grew up with three brothers who love to do things like that too. So I'm like very much at home with swords. Okay, so here's a whole bunch of swords. We don't know how many. There are N swords, okay? 42% of them, I'm gonna divide them like this. 42% of them were left outside overnight and the number that were left out overnight is 8.4, okay? Now, we know that the other half of these must be what, 58%. But what we're trying to find out is how many in all. So what we know is that we take the original number of swords and we multiplied it by 0.42, right? Remember 42%? We can write as 0.42 or we can write it as 42 over 100. Same, same, right? I'm gonna use the decimal. This is N. The total number of swords that were left, that, that exist, times 0.42 because 42% of them were left out all night. And we know that that number was 8.4. I don't know how you have four tenths of a sword. Somebody must have chopped one almost in half. All right, so now we have a little algebraic thing here. I'm gonna put in in parentheses so it looks like multiplication more. And we can see that if we take, if we divide both sides by 
in a happy little algebraic twist, then n will be by itself, right? This will cancel. So now we have to take 8.4 and divide it by 4.2. Now that doesn't look too hard because I can see just by looking that, um, you know, 84 and 42, 42 is half of 84, but these decimals are cluttering it up. So we have to be careful about this. And so let's do some division and we'll review the rules for dividing with decimals. Uh, 8.4 divided by 0.42. I kind of wrote that in a weird way. Okay, let's review how this works. When there are decimals on the outside, you have to bump them all the way to the end of the numbers. We have to do the same thing inside, filling in with zeros because we don't have enough digits. Then this goes all the way up here in our answer, right? So first you bump the outside ones, you do the same thing on the inside, and then you take that decimal up and put it in your answer. This is really hard and this is one reason why I don't use calculators with my students is because these rules are so picky and fussy. Who's gonna remember that if they're not using it like at least once a week? It's really hard. Okay, how many two times does 42 go into eight? It doesn't. How many times does 42 go into 84? Oh, sweet, two times. We multiply four and eight. Yes, that's perfect. We get zero, so our division is done, but our answer needs a little help we have a gap here, so we have to fill it in. So our answer is 20. There were 20 swords in all. Hmm, that's a good number of swords. 10 each. Um, okay, and so the answers available to us are 10, 20, 24, and 32. You chose this one. That's not right. The right answer is 20. Okay. Now, I know you're probably really sick of looking at these problems, but as you work them with me or shortly after I say goodbye, I want you to think if you can remember at all, what were you thinking? How did you come up with that wrong answer? Because what you want to do is you want to undo that thinking and you want to retrain yourself to do the problem the way that I have showed you here. So that will be very helpful if you can take a minute just to reflect on, oh, what was I trying to do? Why did I get confused with that? Um, so that you can unthink that the next time you see these problems. Um, it's really important that you do a really solid performance in this arithmetic section because you don't want to get placed down into some lower level high school review class um, at, at Edmonds Community College, right? Um, we can talk more about that later too, but anyway, let me know how this goes. Text me as soon as you finish this and say either it made sense or it didn't make sense or two of them made sense and two of them didn't and tell me which ones whatever, right? Give me some feedback on this and I'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Goodbye.